sharing the screen with you. The next couple of cards, I'm just going to do one card at a time. Although the video is going to be short, I think the, the information on each card is important enough not to mix it up with other, other information about the imperfect. And it's going to be a relatively short, for me especially a short video um, on understanding the imperfect. The imperfect, I would say that the imperfect and the subjunctive, which is a mood, not a tense. When you're talking about this area of grammar are the hardest for it, at least some English speakers. The reason I say English speakers, let's say versus French speakers or Italian speakers or maybe um, speakers of other languages. First of all, it's because I speak English and I know how hard it, it was for me to understand this. But another reason would be, I think like for example, in other languages, in a lot of other languages, this tense hasn't, hasn't been, forgotten, buried, or become invisible. When English is rather invisible. So here we go. The ing in the past, when it indicates an action in progress, because you know the ing has a lot of meanings. When you're talking about it in relationship to verbs, for example, I am talking, I was talking, we were talking, we have been talking. That ing is called the present participle of the verb. The present, not the past, the present participle of the verb. But that's not the only time you use ing in English. You can use ing as a gerund. Now in English, the gerund doesn't mean the same thing as, as herundio in Spanish. The gerund in English means a word and a verb that plays the role of a noun. An example, smoking is illegal in the subway or uh, prohibited in the subway. Smoking looks like a verb. It has the form of a verb, but it's not a verb. In that context, smoking is an, it's playing the role of a noun and therefore is considered a noun in that sentence. So I'm only talking about the ing, I'm only talking about in the past, and I'm only talking about when it indicates an action in progress. I was eating, I had, ah, no, not I had, but no. Uh, no, you were sleeping. In Spanish, that verb that ends in ing must be expressed in the imperfect. In the imperfect. It can either be done by placing the main verb in the imperfect form as in te llamaba, or by using the imperfect form of a, the verb estar with the main verb in the present participle form. So, te estaba llamando. Both in English, in English, are translated as I was calling you. So if you say te llamaba, that means I was calling you. Now that's not a feminine sentence, of course. I was calling you uh, uh, when blah, blah, blah. When someone entered the room, cuando llegó alguien. Or you can say te estaba llamando. That's what I say a lot. I think because of my, because of because of, because I'm an English speaker. Te llamaba, te estaba llamando. Right. 
because that's very close to English. I was calling you, right? I don't know, I, I, but I normally say te estaba llamando. But either way, whether you say te llamaba or te estaba llamando, it means the same thing in English. I was calling you, okay? And of course, that's not a complete sentence. I was calling you uh, on the phone when blah, blah, blah happened, okay. Another example. Me cepillaba los dientes. Estaba, this is going to be a little bit difficult for me, especially getting the accent correctly. Estaba cepillándome los dientes. In Spanish, there's two ways to do it. I've heard both. When I lived in Mexico, I would hear both. And, but um, normally, uh, um, and that's translated as, I was brushing my teeth. In English, that would be called the past progressive form of tense of the verb. So once again, let's look at it. We're talking about the imperfect. We're talking about structure more than meaning. And we're talking about the use of the ing and how that's done in Spanish. So the ing in the past, when it indicates an action in progress, something was happening. Now it could be something was happening while something else was happening. So two things are happening. And in English that's while or Spanish mientras. Hablaba por teléfono, por teléfono, mientras cocinaba la cena. Okay, so two things are happening at the same time. I was cooking, I think I said I was cooking um, dinner while, while talking on the, while you were talking on the telephone, something like that, right? Or it could be, estaba, uh, jugando con el perrito cuando, so yo estaba jugando, there it is, estaba jugando con el perrito cuando entraste, boom, you interrupted the action. Even if you don't literally interrupt the action. So I was playing with the little dog when you entered, okay? So we're talking about actions that are in progress. The way you express it, you have two ways of expressing it. You can take the main verb to play, to sleep, to eat, and you can put that in the imperfect form. When it's an AR verb, it takes the aba, abas, aba, Abavamos, aban, or the er form, which is ia, ias, ia, iamos, iamos, comi, comiamos, yes, iamos, ian, and put it in that form, or you can use the verb to be. Estaba, estabas, estaba, estábamos, estaban and put the main verb, I was, now what were you doing? I was eating, sleeping, playing, typing, tanning, I don't want to tan, um, fanning, I don't fan either, uh, writing, walking, and you put that in the ing form, which for ar verb, it's ando, with for er verb, and for ir verb, it's endo, an example would be te llamaba, right? So the main verb is llamar, it's in the imperfect form, llamaba, or you can say te estaba llamando. So the, llama, the llamar is not in the imperfect form. The imperfect form is the verb to be estaba, 
and the Germán is in the um, present participle, Germando, te estaba Germando. But in English, they both mean, I was calling you. Another example here was, me cepillaba los dientes. So there you have the verb cepillar in the imperfect form, the aba, in perfect form, the aba form. Or you can use the verb to be, and this is closer to the way we do it in English, and say, estaba cepillándome los dientes. Either way, it means I was brushing my teeth in English. The imperfect, you hear a lot in Spanish, just like you hear a lot the, uh, the subjunctive. So in the beginning, I think English speakers look for ways to avoid using this tense, but you later find out, especially if you live in the country, you can't. You, 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 you can't ignore it. You can't ignore it at all. So I'm gonna let this stand on its own. The next couple of cards I'm gonna let this stand on their own because I think they're important enough to spend, a, spend time on it rather than to go through it quickly. Because sometimes you don't have to do so much because it's, 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 it's not a difficult concept to understand. Now this is a little bit more difficult to understand. Okay, so once again, Kerala Fickler McLean, Welcome, W-Y-L-C-O-M-E.com. Um, Thank you for coming to either one of my web pages, if this is on the web page, or to my YouTube. If you're at the YouTube, I would appreciate if you would subscribe. And I hope this has been some help. So I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. And I'll... Going to say to you, uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.